Hello everyone and welcome to our North London project. This is one of my absolute favourite projects that we've ever designed. It took nearly two years to complete. It's a grand family home and today I will be walking you around some of the principal areas of this house. So come on inside and I will show you around. The first room that we're looking at today is the entrance hallway. The entrance hallway is always a very special room because it sets the tone for what you're going to see next in the house. We designed a large space and we integrated a seating area which is extremely comfortable as you have a place where you can sit down, put your shoes on and off before leaving the house. Equally as practical, we designed a console area with a decorative mirror so you have space to put your keys, a space to store away some of the items that you don't want to see and you have a beautiful mirror so you can look at yourself before leaving the house as well. We created not one but two clock rooms. We wanted to make sure that we integrated as much storage as possible to accommodate for all the members of the family and their guests. As you can see there's two double doors and then there's also a clock room to the left of the entrance hallway. This wardrobe design has this lovely beading detail which echoes the panelling on the wall in the entrance hallway and it creates a nice language a continuation throughout the project. I love the alabaster pendant in this room. It's very clever in the way the light is totally concealed. I also like the elegant way this piece is suspended from the ceiling with leather straps. The kitchen is the heart of the house, especially in this project, because our clients do spend a lot of time cooking. So we had to ensure this room was spacious, comfortable and very practical. The position of the hob is one of the key design choices that you have to make when designing a kitchen, and probably one of the first ones too. I always encourage my clients to have the hob position on the island, because that allows you to have bar stools on the other side, or on the side and this is a much more sociable setup. This is also the setup that I have at my home and I love it because it allows me to connect to my guests rather than cooking and facing a wall. This kitchen has plenty of storage which is all being custom designed. I particularly love the pantry cabinet which is where you can have your breakfast station. You have your toaster, you can have some cookbooks, it's an opportunity for styling but equally, in the morning, if you don't have time to clean it up, you can simply close the pocket doors and you can worry about it later when you get home from work. I like to have the sink tucked away from the hob because that is where your dirty pans and pots will end up, so you don't want to have them on display in front of your guests. We were quite lucky in this particular scenario because we ended up with the sinks directly in front of the window and it's a rather nice setup because when you wash your plates, you can actually look outside in the garden. So one of my non-negotiables when designing a kitchen is the tap selection. The tap is one of those elements that you end up touching every day a lot of times, so it needs to be of the utmost quality. I love to use the cooker tap because it provides instant filtered and boiling water. And in fact, this is the most energy efficient way to produce the boiling water. Our clients wanted to access the kitchen via the main entrance hallway, but they also wanted a secondary route which connected the kitchen to the formal dining. In order to achieve that, we positioned a pocket door on the side of the fireplace wall in the living room. For the principal areas of this house, we wanted to achieve a real sense of grandeur and glamour. So we decided to not put a solid partition wall between the dining room and the living room. That provides us with an enhanced sense of depth. As you stand in the dining room, you can look all the way back to the living room and vice versa. So the space feels very deep and grand. In the living room, we created a focal point with the fireplace and joinery wall. We designed two niches with a combination of open and closed storage where our clients can place the accessories they love the most. 
As the fireplace is one of the focal points of this room, I wanted to make sure that we chose a really special stone. I came across this lab and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's got a really subtle pattern and it's got this beautiful grey-blue tone which complements our scheme. My client and I share a true love for off-whites and blues. So these are the main colours that you will see throughout the project. In order to keep this room feeling light and fresh, we decided to use the off-white on the large surfaces, like the sofas and the walls. And we then used the blues as an accent colour on the occasional chairs, on the curtains and on the scutter cushions. And that brings a lovely contrast and colour accent. My favourite piece in this room has to be the coffee table. I love the organic shape and the liquid metal finish used on the top. It's very unique. The principal suite is composed by three rooms which are connected with each other. You have the principal bedroom, the dressing room and the ensuite. The focal point of the bedroom is always the headboard wall as that is the first thing that you see as you walk into the room. I like to design oversized headboard walls just because they make the room feel very cozy. In this case we did a low headboard wall because we wanted to showcase the panelling behind it. Bedside tables are one of your key furniture pieces in the bedroom. I like to have at least two drawers because that provides additional storage which is always welcome in London properties. I also integrated an open shelf as that is an opportunity to display some nice books or have decorative objects. In this particular case we've wrapped the drawer fronts with a nice blue leather just to add that touch of elegance and glamour to the piece. This room has plenty of storage. We designed some lovely wardrobes and also a dressing area with integrated drawers and a beautiful mirror so our clients can do their makeup in the morning before they get ready for the day. We also designed a media unit which is on the opposite side of the bed and that has the TV and also some open shelves. So dressing rooms are usually rooms that are mostly filled up by built-in joinery. So you have to be clever in the way you do that because otherwise the room can end up feeling quite heavy. I personally like to introduce the occasional freestanding piece of furniture just to soften the room. In this case we did that lovely bouquet blanche which we positioned under the window and it just adds that element of like softness and I just really like the texture of the fabric. For the wardrobes, we use the mixture of finishes. We have this beautiful mid-tone timber frame, and then we use this very elegant textured wallpaper on the doors to add that touch of glamour. We also position the handles on the edge of the timber frame, so when you pull the handle open, you don't really touch the wallpaper, so the wallpaper is protected. When it comes to storage, I prefer to prioritize hanging over shelving. Hanging is a lot more practical because you can see your clothes a lot better and also your clothes will not crease nearly as much. If a room footprint allows, always try and include an island. An island is just a lovely piece of furniture. It provides additional storage and equally provides a surface area where you can fold your clothes and also put your suitcase on top. Thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to follow us on our YouTube channel and let us know your thoughts and I will see you again soon on the next one.